Hello, 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 hello. It is Pete and Adria Audio, so we're back with a part two to the video I uploaded um, yesterday with the Hobie Brown, like, you confessed to him and all that. If you want to watch that, don't worry, I will leave a link so that you can watch, you know, part one to catch up. Uh, but yeah, this is part two. That's basically all you need to know. So yeah, let's get started. The link to this man fiction part one and my Spider-Man playlist will be in the description. Let's get started. It had been a couple of days since your confession and Hobie was convicted. And whether or not he should rip off the proverbial band-aid or and tell you about his secret identity and possibly put you at risk for potential dangerous circumstances in the future. Or keep you in the dark for a little while longer until he felt brave enough with himself and his situation to come forward. After all, his personal relationships, whether platonic or romantic, and Spider-Man never, no, never went well. It was a sacrifice placed upon his shoulders of all the variations of who were chosen to be John, the mask of Spider-Man. If the legacy of being Spider-Man was a death sentence to those who are close to you, Hobie doesn't want you to death to be treated as his canon event, or whatever hand-fisted bullshit Miguel was trying to ram down everyone's throat in order to justify allowing a loved one of theirs to die. Hobie refuses that being the case due to his righteous mistrust of Miguel. He kept your name out of his mouth unless it was within the presence of a few that he could trust, like his friends. So they have a crush on you, have began. Yeah. And you have a crush on them. Miles jumped in. Mm, ain't no point in hiding it. Miguel's, oh, not Miguel, sorry. Hobie coolly replied, because why should he bother hiding something so very obvious? So what are you going to do about it? Gwen finishes and Hopi only shrugs. Dunno. Pav made an exaggerated face of shock and looks over at Miles and Gwen, who were already expecting this reaction from him. As they exchange looks for the person looking back at Hopi, Dunno, the person that you would express that they like too. It wasn't me they were talking to, Pav. It was Spider Man. Clear difference. No need to rom comment. Pav waved his comment away continued the tangent. They like you. You like them. Your response to all of that information is dunno. Hobie again shrugs. He didn't really know what to do. Yeah, sure, the feeling between you two was mutual, but that did not mean that he was going to risk your safety over his feelings. No matter how deeply he feels to them to the point where the idea of you being at risk because of him acting out of selfishness and having you made him physically hurt. Hobie would rather enact upon his selfishness in a way that meant letting you go on and move on to someone who wasn't constantly putting your life in danger, whilst also getting to shamelessly cling to some part of you in the process, even if that just meant being your platonic friend. And even though he already knew that that wasn't what you wanted, what do you want me to do, Pav? Hobie began, go up to them and be like, Hey, remember when you had that talk on Spider-Man up on your roof? And yeah, that was me. And I'm not having to laugh because I like you too. He made a fa face at this. Nah, I'd rather them call me a nonce for the rest of my life. Because if that's what they want me in their life afterwards for lying to them this entire time, he murmurs the last part to himself. Mostly it was silent for a while. He, Pav, and Gwen, and Miles sat on what had been said. The three later shared a look between them as Hobie looked at the picture of you two that he kept within the pockets of his vest. He smiled softly to himself as the echoes of your laughter ran out through his head like a melody. He could set his soul adrift on the most sleepless nights. It was obvious to Gwen, Pav, and Miles that Hobie held you very close and dear to his heart. Gwen, in particular, was aware of how much of an impact you had made on Hobie. From the time that she had spent at his place, it was obvious to where the, it, it was that you had touched as Hobie made it apparent to keep it that way. 
You've made yourself a home within Hobie's heart, and she knew that she'd that he'd fight to keep you in his life. Hobie, he lifted his eyes to meet theirs. Would you rather be afraid to tell them who you are for the rest of your life? Or tell them while you already have the chance, because from what you've told us about Wyan, they would not hate you or call you that, whatever that is. Maya was mumbled under his breath as Hobie raised his brows. Has it crossed your mind at all that you might be overthinking this? Not to say that fear ain't real, but what I'm trying to get at is that you should pursue what makes you the happiest. Regardless of the fears that you may have, because it... In the end, it doesn't matter. Isn't it better to have love and loss than to have never loved at all? Hobie mewled on Mayo's advice once he got back to his reality before finding himself standing on that very same rooftop where his conflict began, looking down at the clutched mask between both hands in a contempt so much that he didn't even hear the voice that called him out until you were right next to it. Hobie is everything all right? He had told you prior to meet him up on the rooftop of some abandoned apartment complex that you were more you were more than Cammy soul with at this point, but he said it in, in a way that made you feel as though there was something eating away at your best friend. You weren't about to let him go through anything alone without you. Upon realizing how close you were to him, Hobi was slick enough to hide his mask behind his back when he addressed you, stuffing it into his back pocket so that you wouldn't get overly curious about his hand placement. And then again, you were always so observant, almost as much as him when he noticed that your eyes lingered. You already knew what this was about, to which Hobie wouldn't be surprised. If that was the case for this would make that situation a lot easier for you to process what you already knew. Uh, yeah, everything's cool. Why is it that you think someone something's up? The raise of your brows only told Hobie that you weren't buying it. Oh, I think there is, but it looks t to me that you need a little bit of prompting. And without missing a beat, your hand was halfway reaching for his back pocket when he caught your wrist there. And he looked at you. The hell was that for a knob head? You shrugged. Like I said, you need prompting, otherwise you wouldn't be defending what's ever in your back pocket. So apt-minded, adamant you were. You were smart. Hopi had to give you... And that's... Sorry, I, I keep stuttering, sorry. Hopi had to give it to you. That is, as he let go of your wrist and decided to quit the unnecessary prolonging and pulled out the mask from his back pocket chucking it into your waiting hands. He then sat himself near the edge with the bed's back facing you so you couldn't look up to see your face. When you could, when you say, so this is what you were hiding from me. I knew Spider-Man felt a little too familiar, and now I know why. Hope you heard your footsteps get closer before stopping altogether, and you sat yourself next to him. You were both silent, but... It was a silent, loud enough to dampen everything out, at least in the moment, and Hobie didn't know whether the silence would lead to. And neither did you, as you were now realizing that you would just confess your feelings to your best friend without even knowing it, which was already enough to take in, but for that friend to also be Spider-Man was a whole other thing to unpack. Were you mad that he didn't tell you? No, not even in the slightest. Were you worried that you would just... That you, sorry, I don't know why I keep starting. This is written really weird. You were more worried than you could ever be mad. After all, you had just found out your crush and best friend was Spider-Man, for God's sake. Of course you'd be worried for his well-being. Here, you tell him holding out his mask for him to take. You can have it back. Hope he did as you asked and took the mask back before it was fully in his grasp. He yanked it away from his reach, causing him to give a look. Give it. He tells you straightforwardly, and you stood your ground and pressed your finger to your cheek. Now, tell, not until you tell me something first. Did you know I had a crush on you prior? Hobie shrugs. Uh, no. Honestly, it wasn't like you would... It wasn't until you admitted it that you liked me that something started to make a little bit more sense. He hummed contently with his answer. 
but you weren't through quite yet. Do you feel the same? You asked once again, but this time your voice wasn't as steady and not nearly as strong. It was fearful, hesitant, something Hobie never wants you to be when you're near him. Of course I do. Thought I made it pretty obvious when I personally dealt with those two who chatted shit behind your back. I thought it was obvious when I let you into my heart and that there would be no way that I was letting you out. But with this, he gestured to the mask in your outstretched hand, made it all the more harder for me to do that without putting your life in danger. I was hiding this other life from you to protect you, but you were always too observant for your own goddamn good. But it was one of the things I do love about you. Hobie admits, finally happy to get it off his chest. After hearing all of that, you gave him back his mask and rested your head against his shoulder. Mamaringa, you're such a hassle. Hobie smiled for what felt like the first time in a very long while. Throughout this whole situation, he slugged his arm over your shoulder before resting his head on top of yours. Eh, but I'm your hassle, he says before pressing a kiss to the top of your head, feeling you snuggle into his side, smiling to yourself. How unfortunate, you say half-heartedly as Hobie joins in. Yeah, poor you. Thank you.